Hey, this is Rob Michaels, and you are watching the Venom Vlog. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Blog, and we are continuing our countdown to CinemaCon 2018, which starts next Monday, April 23rd, and uh, Sony's going to be there, they're going to have a two-hour panel, and they're going to hopefully talk about Venom movie, and probably some of their other shared universe stuff that they're trying to plan, and this is not a fan event, but there will be probably some fans there, we've talked about this before, it's mostly an event for like movie theater owners, and, and you know, and people in that industry running movie theaters, and managers, and things like that, and there's seminars there to like help them, you know, you know, deal with like unruly guests and you know it's just kind of that kind of thing it's more focused on that but there is a lot of movie information and it's it's studios we're trying to work with these theaters to get people excited to come to the theaters what's working you know in marketing do these posters kind of attract people to come to the movie or do these posters do you need something like this or, you know should we give you more big cardboard stands or you know what's working for you guys and it's kind of a convention like that but they do reveal you know trailers and movie information at these things uh, every year that they have it and so some of you guys who have been following like the Shane Black Predator movie and the Aquaman movie, you guys have been telling me that those trailers will probably drop next week during CinemaCon. So that gives me a lot more hope that maybe we'll see a first official trailer for Venom. And if not if not that, at least the first look of Venom. Uh, it has been two months since that first trailer came out, over two months now. And uh, I think, you know, Sony's been di diligently working on this movie, editing it, trying to get it ready. And I have a good feeling we're going to see something. So if you guys have any speculations or hopes of what you want to see at CinemaCon from the Venom movie, let me know down in the comments on all the videos I make this week. Week. and on Saturday I will read some of those and respond to them and uh, we'll talk about them then as we count down for the final days until next Monday. So today what I want to do is kind of like in the last episode I focused on Eddie Brock and I kind of told you my take on Eddie Brock based on you know stories from the comics and, and you know my takeaway and things I feel that I've learned about the character and that's what we're going to do today about Anne Wang. Uh, Anne Wang though to be honest she hasn't been in a lot of uh, Venom stories or even in Marvel comics in general. I think she's appeared in maybe like 25 books total uh, or 25 times total. Uh, but she hasn't had like she doesn't have this rich background which kind of excites me on one level because that means when they do the movie version they can add a lot to that character and Michelle Williams who's going to be portraying her can add a lot to that character and so that's that's pretty neat uh, I think that gives them more flexibility uh, you know with translating the character from from comic book panel to film uh, so you know she first appeared in this book that I have right behind me this gold spider-man book called amazing spider-man 375 which came out in 1993 and she passed away uh, from suicide in 19 or actually in the year 2000 in Amazing Spider-Man number 19 volume 2 of Amazing Spider-Man uh, issue 19 and uh, this one was written by David Michelini and drawn by Mark Bagley and they're the you know co-creators of Carnage uh, David Michelini is also the creator of Venom and they created Anne Wang in this book um, and she first appears as she's kind of just at home and Spider-Man shows up on her door and Spider-Man at this point in the comic we talked about this before his parents they came back into his life turns out later on they turn out to not be his real parents but at this point he doesn't know that they show up back in his life he's trying to reconnect with them re, you know bond with them after having missed them for all these years and uh and uh, Anne Wang, you know, or vet, and, and I'm sorry, Eddie Brock shows up to kidnap his parents. And so now, you know, Peter's desperate. He wants to find his parents. And he starts doing one thing he doesn't normally do, which is he tries to become a detective in a way or a, uh, investigate a journalist. He's trying to dig on Eddie Brock to find something in his past that he can use to maybe help find where his parents are. And what he comes across is a woman named Anne Wang. And there's a lot of contention about how to spell her name. Uh, Larry Hama, I know in some of the books he wrote, Sinner Takes All, Along Came a Spider, he wrote A-N-N, -N, but her actual spelling is A-N-N-E, uh, Ann Wang, but it is spelled both in the comic, so really not one is wrong. I mean, if you use either, it's it's technically they're both canon in a way, uh, so, uh, so, you know, but it's typically spelled A-N-N-E. And she uh, she's, you know, at home and Spider-Man shows up and says, hey, I've been digging about Eddie Brock. I found out you used to be married to him. Uh, you're a lawyer. You're a good person. You seem like a really good person. Uh, he kidnapped my parents and I just want to find them. Like, can you help me with anything? And so she starts reminiscing about their life. And she says, you know, when I met Eddie, he was kind of a sweet guy, not the typical guy I would go for, but I, you know, I found something charming about him. And uh, and then we kind of hit it off. And, and then the honeymoon phase kind of ended when the Sin Eater thing happened and he got 
got exposed and then it kind of you know he lost his job it put him in a spiral a downward spiral of depression and as much as i tried to help him out of it uh, he wouldn't let me and he shut me out and then so we got divorced and she goes but in the good days i remember that he used to take me to this uh you know pier where there was like a merry-go-round and there was like all these things there you know big, big like uh you know on the shore of uh, of new york and i guess across from new jersey and she was like and so he used to take me there all the time and that was like a magical place for us and so spider-man was like all right that must maybe that's where he took my parents because all the other old hideouts of his i couldn't find anything so you know spider-man goes goes to that um, like fair i guess it was but it's shut down now and it's like kind of dilapidated and, and and corroded and he shows up and he sees eddie and he sees his parents and so they fight and then silver sable and her wild pack or i guess just her wild pack uh her group of uh mercenaries show up to take down venom and Anne shows up as well knowing you know that eddie could be in trouble and she feels bad she feels responsible in a way uh for not being able to save him from the spiral he went down so she intervenes and uh, she almost gets killed but venom jumps in to save her and then spider-man comes in to back venom up and then once you know venom sees that the spider-man actually does save innocence and he is selfless uh firsthand he decides to give spider-man a pass and he says you know i still love my ex-wife and um and then you just saved her life uh, you know for me and i owe you at least not to kill you today so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go home this is like seeing Anne and everything has made me look back at my life i'm going to go back to san francisco i'm going to go my way spider-man you go your way and we just you know we just part like this and, and we don't try to kill each other and spider-man's like um i guess i don't have a choice <laughs> so yeah go ahead uh but if, if i hear you do anything i'm gonna come after you and venom's like yeah and if you do anything wrong here in new york i'm gonna come after you so they kind of part and so she's very essential in, in kind of that final cross into you know, Venom becoming an anti-hero because after that he gets all of his own miniseries, uh, he gets all of his own, you know, his own books that are focusing on him, uh, Lethal Protector, all these things. So she's a big part of, of the change in him. And she's also the first tie that we get to his past uh, and the first time we get uh, another account of Eddie's background uh, outside of Eddie. Because remember, before this, everyone who told us about Eddie's past was Eddie Brock. So in this issue, we actually got, you know, something from a third party, someone from, you know, Ann Wang saying what she saw in Eddie. And so this is probably the closest thing in the beginning, in the first couple of years of Venom being around, that we get to actually really knowing something truthful that we can, you know, believe because some of the stuff eddie says of course he's going to put a twist on it he's kind of you know has a, a background in lying and all this other stuff so and he was desperate at the time and he was you know trying to rationalize his horrible actions you know in killing spider-man so he's he was a little broken so you could only could take some of what he said with a grain of salt but here we're getting something from Anne. so to me she's very pivotal with the character but she only lasted about seven years in the comics and after this first appearance um we don't see her again for years she comes back in and the uh, I think it was the Sinner takes all storyline, and uh, and she shows up because the 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 guy who created the Carnage video game is going to jail, and she's one of the prosecutors I guess trying to defend him, and uh, and then Sin Eater the new Sin Eater shows up and takes shots at her, tries to kill her because he deems all lawyers and everyone you know evil, and especially these lawyers who are trying to protect this guy who essentially let Carnage out. Uh, so you know Sin Eater shows up and trying to deliver justice, shoots her. Uh, Eddie Brock saves her, brings her, you know, takes her from the hospital and allows her to bond with his symbiote because the symbiote has healing fa uh, a healing factor. And he puts it on her and she becomes She-Venom temporarily, ends up killing a couple guys. And then when the suit comes off of her and goes back to Eddie, she says, Eddie, that thing made me do that. Like, I'm healed, but, but it, it made me kill those men. And Eddie says, no, the suit doesn't make you do anything. It just enhances what you already want to do. And hearing that, made her freaked out and she gets in like a cab and drives away and then later eddie brock again shows up to save her from like this hit woman and uh sin eater again and then uh, in the next storyline along came a spider which we haven't talked about on the show yet but we will in my scarlet spider show and just a quick side note that show is coming those of you who have been waiting i'm sorry you're waiting so long uh but when my computer crashed last week that was the day i was going to record it and i spent all day working on the computer so i you know i'm behind on scarlet spider but i promise you that show is coming and we will talk about along came a spider in it but in that storyline she once again becomes she venom the the police use her to try to trap venom and they say like all right you're going to call eddie and you're going to tell him that you're uh being arrested and he's going to come down here and rescue you and we're going to we're going to trap him so it's kind of like a, a thing like that and, and so she's not in trouble in any way they put false charges on her to use her as bait but in the end she ends up telling eddie like please don't come get me the cops are here so eddie sends the symbiote through the phone which we learned i guess it can do that because larry hama made that happen in uh, the carnage crossover series 
and uh, and the symbiote goes through the phone and bonds with her. She becomes she venom again. She attacks more people, and then she goes back to Eddie and returns the suit to him. But once again you know, starting to be driven a little crazy by the actions that the suit made her do, hurting more people, and it starts to break her down. So in her last appearance in Amazing Spider-Man number 19, we hadn't, at this point, hadn't seen her in years in the comics, uh, maybe like two or three years. And so when, you know, Eddie shows up to her house, he decides, because in that storyline, uh, in the Along Came a Spider, he reveals, or she, when the suit bonds to her, she sees all of his memories, because that's what the suit does. It transfers memories. That's how Eddie knew how Peter Parker was Spider-Man, because after it separated from Peter, it went on him and it transfers the memories so then he you know transferred his memories at, accidentally to Anne, and then her memories came back to him when the suit rejoined with him and uh, and that happened before and then it happened more this time because it was a, a, a more cohesive bond and now that it wasn't just bonding with her to heal her it was bonding with her to save her um, in a different way and and turn her into Shiva and him purposely uh, so once that transition happens and they share memories, she sees that Eddie is madly in love with her still and has been all these years and hasn't been able to like get over their divorce. Uh, but knowing that he's Venom has puts a wedge between it and she doesn't want that connection really anymore. So she disappears for a few months. And then in Amazing Spider-Man, she shows up again and Eddie comes to her door with flowers and he puts the suit away because he knows she doesn't like looking at the suit. And he shows up as Eddie and he wants to commit to her and he wants to say, look, I love you. I want to commit. Uh, but what happens is Spider-Man at this point in the comics was temporarily back in his cloth black suit. He swings by, she sees it, you know, again, I, I Howard Mackey's a good writer. I like all of his ghostwriter stuff, but some of these stories feel really lazy, and I felt like a one-issue story with Anne was was not good. It should have been like two or three issues so that things didn't just happen just to happen. Like the fact that Spider-Man swings by outside her window just at the right moment when Eddie's there, it's like it's too much of a coincidence, uh, and it's it's kind of lazy shortcut writing in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, I don't know the circumstances of what the Marvel offices where I know they were about to change writers and artists on the books coming up. J. Michael Straczynski was going to come on in less than a year. So I'm sure a lot of stories had to wrap up really quickly. So I, I kind of understand it on that level too. But Anne, you know, she's she sees Spider-Man at Traumatizer and then it t causes Eddie to turn into Venom in front of her and that traumatizes her. And then Eddie goes out and fights uh, Spider-Man and they're fighting out in the street. And meanwhile, they cut back to Anne and Anne can't take it anymore. She's For the last three, four months, she's been in her apartment going crazy, losing her mind, uh, remembering the people she's killed as she Venom. And it pushes her too far over the edge of being a nice person. And she ends up jumping out of her window and committing suicide. And then Venom comes back you know, to, to see her there. So we'll dive more into that issue and more about that storyline in our next Next comic book issue where we just focus just on the death of Anne Wang in the aftermath uh, but that's kind of like her seven year history in the comics she doesn't have a lot uh, that she does uh, but a lot of her moments are very pivotal and matter in a big way to Eddie everything that happens to her so um, yeah so I'm, I don't know how much that's going to translate to the film obviously I don't want to see Michelle Williams like die in this movie I, I hope you know if this movie gets a sequel I hope she sticks around uh, I don't know if we're going to see she venom in this movie I feel like that's too much to cram into one movie I mean who knows maybe she'll get shot and he puts the suit on her to heal her maybe we'll get a scene like that uh but i don't know for sure uh it'll be interesting to see but i know that in the in the interview uh, michelle williams said that she didn't do any motion capture she didn't do any like cg work or anything like that um she just filmed the scenes with Tom Hardy and that was the reason she wanted to do the movie was because she wanted to work with Tom Hardy. She was like, I love this guy. He's a great actor and I think I can learn a lot from him. And, uh, and I went hearing that. I was like, that's really interesting. She's very much, you know, passionate about her craft. And so the fact that she's in this movie, I'm very, very excited. And I think she's going to bring a lot to the character of Anne Wang. Although in that one shot from the movie, from the trailer, I I'm not digging the wig. A lot of people think Anne Wang is like, you know, uh, blonde she is blonde but she dies at blonde a lot of people don't know that um and the reason i remember that is because my mom has dark hair and she dies at blonde uh too uh but um you know the character you know she's been portrayed a lot of ways i know in dark origin one of you guys mentioned that in the original printing of it uh, which i don't remember that far back uh, myself but i have researched it and saw that this was the case i guess angel medina and some of the art people and the colorists on that book uh, portrayed Anne Wang as African American for a couple issues, and then when they released the trade paperback, they recolored those pages uh, to make her, you know, Caucasian, which is what she is in the comic. Uh, so I guess there was like maybe some miscommunication there of the character of who they were writing. Sometimes artists draw things and they really don't know what character they're you know drawing uh because they they have a schedule and they have a deadline they got to keep going. So a lot of reasons why that could be you know a a, a mistake. Uh, but, you know, she is Caucasian in the book. She does have dark hair, but she dies a blonde. Uh, and uh, and she doesn't have an ultimate counterpart or an alternate universe counterpart that I remember. Uh, I just remember she only really showed up in the main Spider-Man books and Venom books 
for the years of 1993 to 2000. Uh, and she hasn't really been mentioned since until The Nativity, which is a recent Venom book. So I'm hoping they find a way to bring her back, maybe that she really didn't die, because I thought that was handled so sloppily. I'm kind of hoping that leaves wiggle room for a new writer to kind of retcon that in a way and say that the symbiote made Eddie Brock think she died. Even though there's a tombstone for her, again, you could have the symbiote you know, altering uh, Eddie Brock's memories in a way or or Im imprinting a different memory onto him or something to hide up the tr hide the truth because maybe it's jealous. It knew Eddie wanted to go back to her and it knew if, it, if Eddie went back to her, it would mean the end of the symbiote in Eddie. So I think that's a good story there that could be told one day. Uh, maybe someone will take up the mantle and do that and bring Anne back into continuity and find ways to tell new stories with her, especially after the interpretation of her we're going to get in the movie. So what do you guys think of Anne Wang? Do you have a, like a favorite moment of hers? Uh, you know, are you a big fan of She Venom or Bride of Venom, as I like to say, because it has like an old movie monster feel to it? Um, and are you excited for Michelle Williams? Let me know in those comments below. And uh, and I just appreciate you guys watching these videos. I hope you're liking them. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to talk about Dr. Carlton Drake and we're going to talk about Riz Ahmed playing him and, and what that means and what that character is and then in the final episode for our countdown week we're going to talk about uh, the Life Foundation and I'm going to probably do a lot of comparisons between them and the Umbrella Corporation from Resident Evil so get prepared for that <laughs> for sure I'm even wearing my Resident Evil shirt today uh, so I probably will put this back on uh, when we talk about the Life Foundation because I see a lot of similarities there especially with the last Resident Evil movie and their plot and plan of the, the Umbrella Corporation and what the plot and plan of the Life Foundation is in the comic books. There's actually a big similarity there, and we'll talk about that uh, momentarily, or at least in the next couple episodes. Not momentarily. I got to go to work now. So thank you guys, as always, for watching my show. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.